and welcome back. I'm Demis Helen, and in this video, we're going to take our first look at the Legend HZ in collaboration with Hans Zimmer. So here we are with the Legend HZ. We have the front panel containing all the main sound design options. And then on the rear panel, we have our simulation options. And then below that are effects down here. So let's just have a quick overview of the synth and just get used to the UI and then I'll demonstrate some of the features that we have here. So first up along the top we have our resizing options, we also have our contrast, colour and texture options here so we can change the colour of our synth and we can change the background texture as well as the contrast. Another way to set the UI size is by clicking either side of the Legend HC by right clicking and you can choose initialize patch, open browser, we've got the sizing options here as well as some links. Jumping over to the right side of the logo we can see our load and save icons so we can load presets from other machines or hard drives that you may have but more importantly the Legend HC is backwards compatible with the Legend so any presets that you've made in the Legend will load into the Legend HC. Next to this, we have our patch browser icon. And here we can choose to search by sound bank, by category, or by preset, and including favorites here as well. So we can set our favorite presets. We can search for our presets as well, and we can also search by author here at the bottom. And then up in the top left, we can see a menu icon, and this gives us the option to open up genetics, which we'll look and explore in another video, but as well as importing patches, folders, and reloading sound banks. Finally, at the top, we have our patch display area, but if we click on this, we can load our patches from here as well, if you're more traditional that way, and we can load our preset. And then finally, we have our switch icon to switch between the front and rear panel, like this. Alternatively, we can click on the Legend HD logo, and that'll take us to the back, and then the same place on the simulation option text, we can change back to the front panel. So just to explain the rear panel here, we have our simulation options, we have the global modulation oscillators filter and amp. These affect how the synth operates. We're not gonna go into depth on these ones, but we have the ability to change the sync modes, the poly modes, the pitch bend range, the cutoff range, as well as phase controls. Whether we're making some percussive sounds, you can actually fix the phases here as well as adding extra saturation and changing a few characteristics of the filters. So it gives you maximum flexibility. And then just below that, we have our effects from the fixed filter bank through to the compressor and the compressor being the last in the chain. And we can toggle these on and off using these toggle switches at the top of each section. So switching back to the front panel, let's investigate that front panel. Uh, the reason I've shown you the rear panel first is just so that we're familiar with it because we're gonna sort of be jumping back and forth here and there whilst explaining the front panel. So here on the front panel, I'm gonna start with the oscillators. Now I'm gonna reset this by initializing the patch and we're gonna have a listen to oscillator one. So you can see that we have six oscillators, all identical. They have a waveform, range, semitone and fine tune controls whereas three and six have the extra key tracking option here. And I'll explain why they have that, but it's for percussive reasons and also for the hidden or secret LFOs that are here. So as we can see, we've got oscillator one switched on with the toggle switch. We have our waveform selector as well as our range, which is just selecting the octave in which that note appears. and then the semitone and fine-tuned self-explanatory. Now, with these, we can layer these up by just simply toggling on the next oscillator. And let's just say we want a saw wave, and I'm just gonna offset the fine-tune a little bit, and I'm gonna put this one octave above this. And we start to get that really nice meaty goodness that the Legend HC can offer. Now, just jumping over to the mixer section here, we have our oscillator gain controls as displayed vertically. So I'm gonna control volume two, which is oscillator two down to zero, and I'm gonna mix it in to taste. So there we are, we have our first sound, but we can also pass this through some white noise. We can pass it through some overdrive as well as some feedback in that traditional way. So let's just have a listen to those. So I'm 
to have a little bit of feedback, a little bit of drive and white noise. Now it might sound a little bit muffled and that's because on the next section our filter is set to 800 hertz. So if we just turn that up, I'm just going to turn this down a little bit. We can hear, we can mix that white noise in now as the full frequency range is available. So here is the filter. This is our cutoff, resonance and envelope amount, as well as some selection options here, as well as key tracking as well. The envelope amount is controlled by the filter envelope here, very familiar tool. And then the master envelope here, the amp envelope is here below that as well. So we can shape the sound how we want. So let's make a little pluck sound using the amp. And then we can make a tighter pluck using the filter envelope. Let's turn that cutoff down. And we can change that to a 12 dB per octave slope or a bandpass. So we've got the main sound set up just using some basic controls, which then I can introduce you to the modulation matrix here at the bottom. So we have the option to add the sequencer as well as the arpeggiator, but we're just going to look at the modulation matrix first and just show you how we can set things up. So first things first, I'm going to set our source as a mod wheel. We have these on our keyboards and we can see on screen here, we can just modulate it here. And then the destination, we can select from a list of parameters that are available to be modulated. But what's even easier here in the Legend HC is dragging and dropping. Just below the destination drop down menu, click on the target and hold, and you can see all the parameters we can modulate highlight in the color that you've chosen for your synth. We can also jump to the rear panel and control all of these that light up as well. So we have the option to modulate these as well. So what I'm going to do is I am going to drag and drop this onto the cutoff and I'm going to modulate the filter now with the mod wheel. And I'm just going to turn the amount up as well. That would be good. So that's an introduction to the modulation matrix. We can set things up that way. So I'm going to introduce you now to the MSEGs on how we can use these as well. So I'm going to jump down to MSEG1 here in the source. And that is activating now the filter cutoff using a predefined shape up here. This is fully customizable, a multi-segmented envelope generator. So essentially, uh, we can draw anything we want in here and modulate any parameter that lights up. That gives us that option from the drag and drop, exactly the same as the mod wheel. And now when we play this, let's just turn up our amp envelope here. Just so it stays sustained and we can hear the modulation happening. We can leave this in sync mode. So it'll stay in a time based mode or we can choose to have it in free mode. And then we have the option to change the mode such as looping. So it's more like an LFO. Or with note on, it'll just like act like an envelope. And we can set this up in the fashion of an envelope attack decay, sustain and release. And it'll just play it once until you press the key again. So essentially we have four MSEGs in total. We have four additional envelopes or four additional LFOs. Now I say four additional LFOs. We actually have two more, which is oscillators three and six. So oscillator three and six with the switches off can be operated as LFOs. So if we change the source to LFO, you can see oscillators three and six turn up in these options. I'm going to choose six to start with, and you're going to see now that we can control this LFO with the waveform shape. So I'm going to set this to a triangle so it's nice and linear. And then we can control the speed here with the semitone control. So this envelope up here from the MSEG is now no longer controlling this. You can see oscillator six is controlling that filter cutoff. But it's not doing it as expected. So what we need to do is switch the range to low. And I'm going to switch the key tracking off, which is going to give us a nice linear response to that shape that we've chosen there, which is the triangle shape. Now the semitone control will be much smoother.
So Oscillator 6 comes in that free mode and we have that nice LFO sound. Now we can switch to LFO 3, which is going down into LFOs and choosing Oscillator 3 in the matrix, which is now going to control that filter cutoff. I'm going to set this up in the same way, key tracking off, low mode, triangle on the wave shape, and we're going to have that same effect. But where Oscillator 3 is different to Oscillator 6 in terms of its LFO capabilities is on the rear panel in our Oscillator section. You can see we have Oscillator 3 Low Sync. Now, if we switch this on, we are now in a time-based mode. So when we click on the semitone control, you can see it displays the time base. So now in half notes in speed, turn it slightly to the left is going to give you dotted version of that with the asterisk and turn it to the right is going to give you the triplet version of that half note. And that's the same for every time base right up to 30 second notes. So I'm going to set this to 16th and it's now going to operate that LFO in 16th. Or we can have it slower at quarter notes. And with that, we have a host synced LFO at our disposal. And if we switch that back to the MSEG, you can see that we actually have the ability to have four more LFOs. So we can have four more envelopes or we can have four more LFOs. So in total, we'll have six LFOs at our disposal, including this particular MSEG section. Before we finish up, let's have a look at the sequencer here at the bottom. This will open up the sequencer and arpeggiator section. And in order to use this, we need to go to the top output section and click ARP. So that's toggled on and now we can hear this in operation. So over to the left, you can see that we have some options. So under type, we have the option for a sequencer or MIDI. If you click MIDI, you can import your own MIDI files that you've already pre-prepared and you can use them here in the Legend HZ. We're going to leave this in sequencer mode, which then gives us the options to use these as well. So in the mode, we have the usuals, as you can see here, and then we have a couple where we can actually set them to work forwards, backwards, ping pong and one shot. So if we say ping pong, that's going to move through the sequence and then bounce back and work its way backwards through it and then forwards again. As you can see by that indication light there. We can also choose preset patterns. So let's pick number five. And we can choose how many steps this runs over. So we're going to choose four to keep this nice and simple. So you just see these first four being activated. Then we can choose how many octaves that it operates over and we can also choose whether we want this in sync mode so we have time based rate or you can choose this to be off and have your own custom rate here in hertz so we're going to leave it on sync i'm going to leave it on 16 and then you can choose the length and swing here as well So let's finally turn our attention here to the main panel where we can program our notation and pattern. And you can see here at the top, we have the indicator lights that light up when the sequence is activated. To the left of the indicator lights, you can see the option to shift our pattern left and right. And this will shift it one step at a time. So if I put this up here so we can see plus six, you can see that plus six will shift along one step every time that way. And if you go the other way, you can see it'll shift that way. Then we have the ability to program in a notation. So we could choose say a third and a fifth. And then we have velocity options and tie options. So you can see it's already tying one of the notes and it'll give it a nice little slur in there. Tie that note together. Turn it off. And the velocity, in order for this to work, we need to assign velocity to a parameter in the mod matrix. So just jumping in here, you can see I've got ARP velocity from the source attached to oscillator one velocity here for this demo. Just turned it up a little bit. So then when we change these values, let's say 0, 12, 67, and let's have that full. You can see it responds to velocity values that way, depending on how hard you press this. So if we turn that up more. And finally, one thing to note here, we have the ability to change this from velocity and choose up to four parameters that can be assigned in the mod matrix too. So I'm going to choose parameter one. And I'm just going to set some of these values at random. 
so you can hear how this is going to work at the moment. Nothing is happening. So by jumping into the mod matrix, we can choose from the ARP drop-down parameters 1, 2, 3, and 4. We've chosen 1. And then we can assign this to something, and we're going to choose the filter. So I'm going to bring the filter down, and I'm just going to bring the envelope amount down a little bit. And now you can hear that these parameters or these values are going to alternate the cutoff position. And let's turn this up as well. So we can have a very precisely controlled sequence like this. And parameter one doesn't just have to be attached to one parameter. We can attach this to multiple parameters as well. So number one could also be used for the, in fact, let's just use the drag and drop filter resonance. So when using this, we can obviously create more complex sequences, but what's more important is these are working in parallel so we can see velocity is still working even though we've got parameter one set here. It's just really to change the screen so you can edit those parameters and that gives you maximum flexibility here in the sequencer. Finally, let's just take a look at this top panel here where we haven't investigated yet. The pitch bend and mod wheel controls. We have the control section, so we can introduce glide or some default modulation wheel options, which is using oscillator 3 or noise. And then if we jump onto the other side of the MSEG, we have our output options. We can toggle the effects and the arpeggiator on and off. We can control the detune spread as well as unison and polyphony. So there we are, that is the Legend HC in collaboration with Hans Zimmer. We have a lot more options to explore in there, but that is just the basics to get you started so that you can navigate the synth and start creating your own amazing cinematic patches. And with that said, thank you very much for watching. I've been Demis Helen, and I'll look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Take care.